Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to go over the 10 reasons I choose to use Linux over Windows. One of the reasons I'm making this video is I have been receiving a lot of comments lately from people that say, Windows 11 just works. Why even mess with Linux? Well, I'm going to tell you why. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like what the channel is doing and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Now, these 10 reasons I'm going to give you are going to be in no specific order, but I'm going to start with number one, which for me is free as in freedom. Now, a lot of people don't know what that means, and a lot of people, it means different things to them. Like with Farron OS here. I went over, downloaded it, threw it into a virtual machine, and I opened it up. And I can go around here. I can look at all these applications that it comes with. And if I want to, I can even go into the code and inspect the code, see what the code is doing, see how this operating system works. Hey, maybe I've got a better idea of how to make it work better, so I can go in and change the code. And if it works better and I like it, I can do that. I can change it. And then the best part of it, if I want to take it and make a copy of it and give it to somebody else so they can enjoy it, I can. The free is in freedom gives me the freedom to do anything to this operating system that I choose. And then I can share that work that I've done for absolutely nothing. I don't have to charge for it. I don't have to ask permission. I don't have to do anything. I just have to respect the right that when I pass that off to somebody else, if they've got a way to make it better, they can make it better themselves and then share it with somebody down the line. Okay? That's what free is in freedom means to me. If it means something else to you, please let me know in the comments below. Next on my list is number two, free is in free. I went over, downloaded this operating system for no charge. I didn't have to pay a penny. There's no subscription fee. There's no hidden fee. I own the operating system. When I download it, put it on a USB, or download it to my hard drive, I own it. I don't have a license that I have to pay for. I don't have to ask for permission from anybody to use this operating system. It is mine, okay? Now, I have a lot of people say, Windows 11 is free. You don't have to pay for it. Well, yeah, you can go through and you can find it. You can download it. You can use it. But here's the problem with it. It'll eventually ask you to activate it, okay? And when it asks you to activate it and you don't, it's eventually going to keep showing an activate Windows watermark in the bottom right corner of your screen. Okay, you can live with that. Fine. Personalization. You can't change anything in the personalization area without an activated copy of Windows. Okay? And you're going to get a continuous activate now notification in your settings. Okay? If you're wanting to use Windows 11 and you don't want to pay for it, sure, you can download it. But it's going to be limited, and it's going to continually say, activate Windows 11. Activate Windows 11. Now, number three to me is freedom of choice. Now, when you download Windows 11, or you buy Windows 11, or however you get Windows 11 and you put it on your system, this is what you get. That's it. Here's what you're looking at. You're stuck with this layout. You can't change it, really. You can make it lighter. You can make it darker. You can add a different background. Pretty much, that is where your choices end, okay? Now, freedom of choice for me is the ability to go over here. If I want to download something like Ubuntu, I can download it. Or maybe I want to go with something that looks different. Let's go with a Debian. I can download a Debian. I'm only showing five choices here. Fedora, Manjaro, MX Linux. There is a plethora of other options that you have out there. You are not trapped into this one ugly desktop you can go out here and find a desktop that you like. You can find an operating system that you like. And you have choice. You have freedom of choice. You're not stuck with this by itself. You can go over here and you can look at literally hundreds of different operating systems and distributions and say, okay, I want to give this one a shot. Or I want to give this one a shot. Or I want to give this one a shot. You're not trapped. You have a freedom of choice, which you do not have with Windows 11. Number four on my list, privacy and security. This goes without saying, guys. You're looking at an operating system right here. We're looking at here. If you open up Edge, Edge is tracking you. Edge is trying to sell you things. Edge is letting you know about things that they're trying to sell. 
you'll get little notifications up here that will have advertisements in it. Your Windows operating system is continually spying on you, finding out how to use it, finding out what products you use, and then they're shoving those advertisements in front of your face. But when you're using something like Linux, in this example, Farron OS, you don't have that problem. This operating system is not tracking me at all. It's not sending any information back to the people that make the operating system. It's not trying to sell me things, okay? And when it comes to security, there is nothing more secure than Linux. If you look at it right now, 90% of the world's websites run on Linux. 500 of the world's supercomputers run on Linux. That's the top 500, okay? So, I mean, if you're wanting to talk about privacy and security, Linux wins this hands down. There's no comparison. And when it comes to malware or viruses, I've been using Linux since 2008. I have never experienced that. In the last year that I used Windows in my businesses, I had a total of 19 days that I was down because of issues with Windows. Since I switched those machines over to Manjaro, I've had less than nine hours. That's saying something. Beginner friendly and easy to use. A lot of people can plug Windows in. They know right where they're going. They know right what they're doing. Well, hey, Linux has made leaps and bounds in the last five to six years. It doesn't get any easier. You can go down here on the bottom. You know, hey, that's my file manager, and it pops right up. There's your file manager. Easy to use. What about my app store? Pops right up. There's the apps. I can get GIMP. What else am I looking for? Am I looking for OBS? Let's look for OBS. OBS pops up right there. How about Caden Live? Let's look up Caden Live. Caden Live pops up right there. Not only can I download it directly from the repository, I can also get it from a flat pack. So, I mean, I don't know how much more beginner-friendly you need an operating system. Let's go down here and open up the application menu. There's my LibreOffice. There's files. Uh, what else do I have? LibreOffice Math, Graphics. I got Krita and Coco, LibreOffice Draw. I mean, everything I need is right there. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory and pretty user-friendly, so that's not really an excuse anymore. Reliability. Hey, I said it earlier about my machines and my work. Linux has been extremely reliable. I know that you can talk about Windows 11 and Windows 10 and Windows 7, etc., etc., but at the end of the day, there have been Linux machines that have been running for years that have never been restarted. I mean, let's just be totally honest with ourselves. You can't go through a general update on Windows without it restarting three or four times. So reliability, for me, Linux wins this hands down. If you think something different, please let me know in the comments below. Hardware and resource usage. This is a big one. Let's look at something here real quick. I'm going to go to Terminal. Let's open this up. Let's make it a little bigger so we can see. Let's see if they have HTOP installed. Let's go to top. Okay, right now, at rest with just the terminal open, Farron OS is using about 670 megs of RAM, okay? To be quite honest, you're going to find Linux machines that use anywhere from 200 megabytes of RAM all the way up to 1.3 megabytes of RAM at rest. I know this for a fact. My Windows 11 machine sits at about 2.5 gigabytes at rest. That's with nothing open, okay? Matter of fact, let me switch over and show you. Okay, we're over here. Let's go to settings. I mean, no, as a matter of fact, let's go to control, alt, delete. Let's go to task manager. And let's go more details. And right now, OBS is using about 109 megabytes of memory. So we will take that off of the three. See, with OBS open and running, I'm looking at three gigabytes of the 7.4 now if you take away that process you know what let's just go ahead and close the virtual box and obs as you can see right there is using 110 megabytes you go over to performance 2.9 gigabytes even if you take that 110 off you're sitting at about 2.8 let's go 2.7.5 gigabytes of ram at rest okay that is that's ridiculous guys that's resource usage that is unnecessary. With everything off, like I said, it hovers 2.4 to 2.7, back and forth, for a machine sitting at rest just to be on. So, having stated that, you can take a Linux operating system, put it on older hardware, and that will just work, okay? You take Windows 11, 
Try to put it on a four or five year old PC. You're going to have lagging issues. You're going to have resource problems. You're going to have a lot of issues that you don't have to deal with with a Linux operating system. Not to mention you can keep old hardware out of landfills and keep making it useful. Okay, let's close this. Next, let's cover software. Generally speaking, if you want software for Windows, you can go to their store, obviously, okay? And you'll have items in here that don't cost anything, but it's packed with ads. Or if you want a piece of software like a, a photo manipulation program, a lot of people are going to go with Photoshop. Or pretty much every piece of software you're going to get for Windows is going to cost you something, whether it be advertisements blasted all over your screen or whether it be the cost of the actual program. Now let's flip back over to Farron real quick. Okay, let's open the store back up. Okay, it opens up. I'm going to go ahead and maximize it. And you can look in here and pretty much everything that you have, whether it's the editor's picks from Blender to Thunderbird to Shutter, you can go down here and pick uh, accessories. You can open up a subcategory and you can go through all of this software. None of this software has ads in it and none of this software is going to charge you a dime because it's created on the same premise that Linux is created on. It's free and open source, which means if I download a program, okay, like FileZilla and I want to use it, if I want to go in and change the code and make it better, I can, and then I can actually share it with other people. Now, there will be things like Google Chrome that you can download and put on your system. I don't know why you'd want to because it's going to track you just like a Windows 11 system will or Microsoft Edge will. If you're going to download Google Chrome, just know that that's going to track you when you're using it inside of Linux because that is built into that browser. Now, if you want to go with a browser like Chrome that's not going to track you, then you go with the browser that Chrome is based on, which is Chromium. You do a search for it, and when it comes up, it's right there. You've got the Chromium browser, which is the same as using Google Chrome. It just doesn't have all of the telemetry in it, and it's not going to track you, and it's not going to put ads in front of your face, but that's truly up to you. But the software that you get on Linux when you download it, it's free of charge. Now, there are some out there that you can get that aren't open source. Let's like say... Uh, DaVinci Resolve. You can use it on certain distributions of Linux. You can get it for free. It's not open source. And if you want all the features, you got to pay for it. What I'm talking about is generally everything you're going to find inside a repository for a distribution or inside their store, you're going to be able to download it, use it for free. And generally, if it's open source, you can make changes to it if you want and share it with other people and not have to charge for it. Okay, you come back to Windows 11, number nine on my list updates. Let's not even get started. Anybody out there knows that if you do updates on Windows, it is generally speaking a nightmare. And if you say it isn't, then you've never really used Windows for any amount of time or updated it the way it's supposed to be updated. This one checked for updates the minute I started it up, obviously. They've made them a little better from Windows 10 to a Windows 11. Still, they've got a long way to go in my honest opinion, but People are so used to it, they just deal with it. I know a lot of people that have to go in and they want to shut their updates off because they've been in the middle of important business or doing important work, and the thing just start updating out of nowhere, and it puts them down for an hour or two. So let's close this, and let's zip back on over to Farron real quick. Now, back on Farron's desktop, if you go over here to their app menu, go ahead and put in Update. It'll say Update Manager. Just click on it. It'll pop this up and just say, Welcome to Update Manager. You click OK, and it'll do a search for updates. And right there, it tells you you're up to date. Do you want to switch to a local mirror? No, I do not. And this is where you do all of your updating. And it's generally very quick, very fast, and you don't need to reboot. You'll download it, install it, and you'll be good to go. As a matter of fact, while it's downloading the updates in the background, you can be working with no issues. And sometimes, even when it's installing, you can be working no issues. Sometimes it'll tell you, hey, we need to update this program. Please close it. When it's done, you can reopen it. Don't have to reboot. Don't have to restart. That's your experience with updating in Linux. Totally different. Makes things a lot easier, and it's not a hassle. Last but not least is better community support. The reason I bring this up, we've all had those issues. Let's just zip back on over to Windows. And we've all been in these forums. What's caused the blue screen of death? Why memory and read-only memory are struck? And I know a lot of people, if you go in here and you ask for help, generally speaking, what they're going to tell you to do is log off, restart. If that doesn't work, 
back up your data and reinstall. Now we'll switch back over to the Farron OS desktop. Let's go ahead and open the web browser. Okay, the web browser has opened. And if you look at this, the minute you open the web browser, depending on what distribution you're using, you've got Farron OS, you've got community, you've got the Farron OS community, they're on Discord, they're at Twitter, you've got extensions. But if you go up here and just start putting in distributions, let's put in something like Manjaro. You pull up Manjaro's webpage. Uh, there it is right there. It opens up. You've got Learn More, Get Manjaro Shell. You can come down here. You got News. You got More. There's Security, Support, First Steps, User Guide, Forum. Let's look up their forum. Now, I promise you, no matter what Linux distribution you're using, anywhere from Manjaro, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, whatever it might be, when you come in here and you ask a question, you're not going to hear back up and reinstall. You're going to find somebody in here that's going to help you fix your issue. And this is where you come. I've been using different Linux distributions for 13 years, and I have never had a question that hasn't been answered in the forum that I go to, no matter what distribution I'm using. So... That is a plus to me. Better community support for your operating system as opposed to pretty much no support with the Windows 11 or Windows community. And that, guys, is pretty much my 10 reasons I choose to use Linux over Windows. If you use Linux over Windows for a different reason, please let me know what those reasons are. If you think I left something out of my video today, please let me know in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.